Well, Um Hamza here is wearing a burqa, as you can see, as she does every day. Is it, as President Sarkozy says, a sign of subservience and subjugation? Or does it free the wearer from the tyranny of fashion and how she looks? Now, it's not just in France that the burqa has caused controversy. When the Justice Secretary, Jack Straw, asked his constituents to remove their veils when talking to him, he outraged some, but was applauded by many. Should Britain ban the burqa? Well, Um Hamza, why do you cover your face like that? Um, I cover my face out of my own choice. I choose to cover it, and um, partly because I'm a Muslim, and being a Muslim, um, our creator in the Quran does say to cover yourselves in a modest way. And I feel, uh, I believe, covering your face is past, uh, part of um, dressing modestly to avoid attraction when you go out. So, the, the danger is I might be attracted to you? Absolutely, because absolutely. The reason I wear, there are so many scholars who do feel that the hands and the, uh, the face do not need to be um, covered, um, but there are also scholars who say, that, yes, that it should be covered. And I feel it should be covered because the most attractive part of anybody is the face. So is there a danger that, that males in the audience are attracted to every female in this studio's face who's here? Are they putting themselves in some kind of... Not necessarily every female face, but yeah, it could stir some sort of... Passions? Yes. Why, why would it not stir passions in a woman to see a man's face? Well... It's about the burqa, isn't it, and about the woman wearing a veil, Yeah. and it's about why women are wearing a veil. Yes, but I'm interested, if, if it's about equality, and you, you, you feel a sense of liberation, don't you, why should not men not be required to cover their faces too? Um, it's a good point, but it's, I wouldn't question that. If, mm. if this is how I understand that the scholars have said, then I would do it. And it's God's will. It's God's will. And if you, if you, out of your free will, choose to be a Muslim, then uh, that's part and parcel of it. And you're closer to the Prophet, you feel? Absolutely. You emulate the Prophet's life. Yeah. Touch Hage, God's will. Emulating the Prophet's life. And also a sense of liberation. You know, she doesn't feel a, you know, a slave to the fickleness of fashion and being judged. I'm an imam in Oxford and in my Friday sermon I gave three compelling reasons why we shouldn't allow the burqa and the niqab to become fashionable commodities in British society. Should they be banned? No, I think we, the British way is not to ban something because it becomes counterproductive. But I want to really elaborate on the three reasons and I want the audience to consider these three reasons. The first reason is that no way in the Quran does the, is the word burqa or niqab being used. No whatsoever. Also the burqa and the niqab is a pre-Islamic custom coming from Byzantium and Persia and incorporating the Islamic society later. Second argument against the burqa and the niqab, that it is sexist and discriminatory. If it's okay for a Muslim woman to hide her face, then Muslim men should hide their faces as well. We are not allowed to hide our face. I can't go into Barclays Bank or the post office or the government office uh, with my balaclava or my motorcycle helmet. So why should we allow in this society when we have gender equal equality, why should we allow Muslim women that right? But, but, but I, I need to develop, <laughs> develop it through the course of the debate because there's some, some potent points there. Um Hamza, please come back on, on, on those points. We'll let, got, then we'll open it up. I've got to stress that it's a freedom of choice. I've chosen to cover my face. I'm not doing it because somebody else has told me to do it or somebody is, or I'm feeling suppressed you into doing it. You mentioned the word scholars. No, you are, like other scholars, they use the hadith. For those of you who don't know, the hadith are the supposed sayings of the Prophet, mostly compiled 250 years after his death. Many, not all, but many are suspect and uh, but fraudulent. But, you, but this is not subservience or subjugation. This and is entirely your choice. Absolutely. And, uh, but, but it is true that the Prophet's wives would cover their faces. And to, to be close to the Prophet's lives and the Prophet's wives' lives. So, if the Prophet's wives, be it's, a, it's but, also a level of piety as well. But the Quran itself says that the Prophet's wives are distinctive and different from other women. So you can't claim that bit. The, uh, this issue is really something that you are saying it is religious. I am quite happy you're for you, 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 for okay. you, anyone to have a freedom, but it's, it's based on your cultural interpretation and not the religious requirement of Islam. But, but, okay, but um, um, Hamza, do you not see that it might well, some people find it alienating and some people find it threatening, because the face is such a vital part of our communication, is it not? Uh, agreed, but then we live in a free country and 
I think we should be able to dress as we please. But if you mask oneself. Dennis, Dennis McEwen, you, you, we can't well, ban this, can we? This I is ridiculous to say. We don't ban things in this country. We don't ban things, but you make it very difficult for people to do them. There are lots of things we make difficult. Uh, um, Hamza's problem, I think, is that she doesn't seem to have read any Islamic literature. If you read the books, the articles, the fatwa, the fatwas, uh, and listens to many of the sermons I've listened to, all explaining that the reason a woman has to wear these uh, forms of clothing is because the woman is inferior to men, she it will incite lust in men, a woman should remain in her home unless her husband gives her permission to go outside the home. So who is it more offensive to women or men, this then? I think it's offensive actually to an awful lot of people. It's offensive to Jewish, Christian and Hindu women who are chased without I've dressing like this. I've never heard so much rubbish. I don't know what sort of Yvonne Islamic Ridley. literature you're reading, but it, uh, it, it certainly isn't the same Islamic literature I'm reading. I don't think um, Hansa should be criticised for her choice, her piety, but I think this is, more th um, this is above religion. This is about a woman's choice to what she wants to wear. And I think... <laughs> Um, but it's about time men like Sarkozy and Jack Straw stopped going into women's wardrobes. You know, it's... It really why, is why, uh, why is it okay for me to show my face but her not to show her face? That That's is discriminatory, her, isn't it? That is her choice. She chooses to uh, dress like that because it's part of her faith. It's and not part of a faith. This is, it's part of a culture, a tribal tradition, the Wahhabi, the Salafi interpretation of Islam. This is the latest fact. Your well, mother, sorry, your mother never wore a burqa, so why are you wearing one? Uh, um Hamza? My mother did wear a burqa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure but about that. Uh, uh, okay, Anna Joy, you want to come in? Uh, Labour PPC? Yeah, can I just uh, bring a different perspective to this, because I think that you're quite wrong, actually. If you look, I want to talk about the evolution of British women in the last 150 years, and I'm afraid, without trying to cause any offence to the young lady in front of me, your dress wear has absolutely nothing to say to me about the evolution of women, modern women, in British society. If you look at the evolution of women's role in British society from the vote through to equal pay, through to maternity leave, you know, those are absolutely key is it moments. not her choice to it, wear what she it wants is to her wear? Choice, but people there is go a through we see people in life Nikki, Anna Joy don't we with Nikki bits with, of metal through their face well, uh, Nikki, you know. but with the greatest respect with the greatest respect i think that this is a question about the kind of civil society that we in modern Britain want to live in in the 21st century. Okay. And I think that the burqa does not have a place in a modern British civil society. Thank you, sir. Um, against that view, it, is, it does show an evolution of British society that maybe 150 years ago people weren't allowed to cover their faces because women weren't equal. But now they have the freedom to cover their faces if that's what they will. That's rather paradoxical, isn't it? It's a paradox. If it's yeah. evolution of free will. Yeah. Uh, Father, uh, Jerry, you're not a father, are you? No, I'm not. I'm a, I'm a Methodist. Maybe someone's father, maybe. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't think oh, about that. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so that's a bit worrying for my little dog color. <laughs> what about this? Is, is this, is this a, a sign, a symptom of subjugation? I want to approach it from a purely pragmatic point of view. If we stop, if we ban the burqa or whatever it's called, I'm not even sure that's, called, that, that's the right word for Nikab it. Nikab burqa, the general yeah. idea. Yeah. If, if we ban that, where do we stop? Do we then go on to ban turbans, crosses, dog collars? Do we go on to ban everything else? This is truly that her face, her face has been covered. But that is not the point. I think we have to realise that this young woman here is not on trial and should not be subjected to any kind of bullying or interrogatory tone because she, has, because she has not done anything at all. But I agree, on the other hand, with all the people who say we must not legislate against what people do and don't wear. What do you Having think, a Benicia? debate about women is absolutely the what right do you thing feel? to do. What do you think when you see somebody dressed as Um Hamza is dressed with their face covered? Do you it think that's a good thing for women? I don't know if it's a good thing for women. I think that Why what would not? be a good thing for women is a lack of bullying towards women, a lack of violence towards women, and a lack of harassment towards women.
Those are good things for women. And I think you really need to step back on the bullying tone because this woman is not on trial. The burqa makes me feel well, I uncomfortable. Think, hang on, I think she's, I I think she's sticking up for herself pretty well. Oh, I don't no, think there's I any sense of that. I absolutely agree. You know. All credit to you. You're sticking up yeah. for yourself very well. So, and, and respect to her for coming on the programme because it was quite difficult to That's get somebody exactly to come on I'm and saying. talk about this. Dennis, come back in. All this talk about being a woman's choice is nonsense. Islam is not a religion of choice. <laughs> Islam is a religion of the law, the Sharia. It is a religion that is controlled by the ulama, the clerics. And again, I don't know what books Yvonne Ridley hasn't been reading, but I can assure you that for 40 years I have been reading books in Arabic, books in English, books in Persian, and again and again and again. The law is the woman must cover herself completely, and it is men who are dictating this to women. It's not really her free choice because of the form of Islam she clearly belongs to. of the form of Islam she clearly belongs to. Yvonne Ridley. Again, uh, absolute nonsense. Uh, the uh, Holy Quran makes it perfectly clear that women are equal in spirituality, worth and education. And you can snigger as much as you want, but I have read the Quran, I don't know if you have, but it makes it abundantly clear and if you go right into the first development stages of Islam women fought in the same battlefields as the men and the first martyr to, to Islam was a woman the first convert to Islam was a woman but there is a point there, there is, is a point is, is there is there not let's get let, you, you come in here then we'll develop another point go on it's got to be a choice because if you go to a Muslim country uh, you do see women dressing in burqas but you also see them dressing in Western, Western costumes, yes, yes. shop skirts. But what, Peter Hitchens, what does it say about, uh, about what they think about men, that our passions could be so easily inflamed? Look at all these bare faces that we've got in the <laughs> studio. Are we all uncontrollable <laughs> sex beasts or something? Well, I, I was going to ask you, Hamza, if she wouldn't mind. Do you feel as you look around here that all the other women here should be dressed as you are? It's personal choice. It I is their choice now. But in the kind of society you would presumably prefer, it might not be so much. I think choice. it would be a safer society. Anyway, you think it would be a safer society yeah, if they all wore uh, what you absolutely. wore? Absolutely. But isn't this the problem with Islam? That it is, in fact, when it's when it's a minority religion, it's all very uh, all very liberal and open and, and, and a matter of choice. But if it becomes the majority religion and controls the society, then the choice goes, and people are told what to do, and it isn't good choice. No, 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 uh, like the gentleman across there says, it's not by force. You can choose to be a Muslim. If you've chosen to be a Muslim, then obviously everything inside in, within Islam is what you're going to be, um, uh, you know, confessing to do. But what you and people like you don't answer, and I really want to answer, if the Quran is a transcendent, immutable, divine text, why didn't God put in the word Nikab or Burqa? And, for example, the issue is really, you know, this is not something that is required by religion. Religion asks for modesty. It doesn't dictate the, the modesty. What you are wearing is a Saudi Wahhabi ca, 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 thing, uh, oh, a oh, tribal oh, oh, dress. Um, um, Hamza, why, I'm interested in, Peter asked you a very interesting question, but I'm interested in why this would be, in, in your ideal society, why it would be safer if all women, for example, in the studio and as we walk the streets and go about our business, were covered as you are. I'm not going to say cover as I am. I'm saying if everybody dressed in a more modest way and didn't um, maybe more looser clothing, etc. I think they'd be. Face? That's, that's what short. do you think then when you see the way that some young women dress in this in this country with just everything hanging out? What do I you think? think? There's loads of problems in society. It's a very unhealthy society that we live in. Mm. There are so many problems. There are very young pregnancies. There are uh, which you do not find in this not so many in the Islamic, in the Islamic culture. Patricia? I think it's very, very dangerous to look at a society and for one woman to blame other women for the ills of what is done to us as women. If the argument is that wearing something like this repels sexual harassment and all yes. sorts of other kind of harassment, I think that in every situation of harassment, discrimination, sexist behaviour, anything like that, the responsibility is on the perpetrator, mm. not on the victim. It's not good enough for us to say, oh, look at these Western women with everything hanging out. We have every right to do exactly what we like. A woman has a right to walk down the street naked and not be harassed or attacked.
Uh, Miriam. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I completely agree, but what I would add is that it's completely irrelevant what Um Hamza thinks of young women down the street or what you or I think about Um Hamza. At the end of the day, what feminist battles were fought in this country, what the feminist achievements were, were the right to wim for women to, to self-determination, to make decisions for ourselves, be it about contraception, be it about marriage, be it about how we dress, isn't be it she about saying whether we mould our isn't, bodies isn't, to the conception. Isn't she saying, I don't want to be part of your society? By of course, covering this her is face a question up. you have to ask her, and that's a question she's responded to you by saying no. She's saying to you, this is a choice I find empowering. And feminism about, is about supporting women who found empowerment, whatever route they find their empowerment through. Claire. I mean, it's ironic in a way that we can only have this conversation about the woman's right to choose in the West, where we have the kind of guarantee of equal rights for women before the law. And in other countries, women are forced to wear the burqa. It's not a matter of free choice. Yeah. And so. Yes, because in a way we need the language of the West, we need the language, which is a language coming out of a, a, a non-Islamic kind of tradition, to make the case yes, that women are free yes, to wear the burqa. It's a European Muslim culture, and we're discussing it from within a European Muslim culture, and it's absolutely outrageous. So the are you saying that within, the West and within Islam, Islamic, Islamic culture, culture, the language is a completely a free like, choice? The fact of the matter is, there is a European Muslim culture in which there is, of course, influence from the language and the debates which have uh, enriched Muslim culture in this, in this country. Am, am, I the wait, wait, wait. am I in danger of having my passions inflamed by seeing your face? Personally, obviously, and again, I say, I think my opinion on this is completely irrelevant. The fact well, of I the don't matter think is, it's irrelevant. Well, I think it is, because the discussion shouldn't be about what you think or I think. It should be about women's choice to make decisions about their own bodies for themselves. Have I got a right Point. to feel insulted that to somebody thinks I would be inflamed if I saw their face. Only if, I have if a right you assume that that's what they're thinking, and I think for a lot, uh, mm. quite a large portion of these women, that's not what they're thinking. Yes, sir. Go on. Um, someone earlier mentioned the word piety, and we haven't talked about that at all. And I think that's quite key because um, in some uh, Christian traditions, like you have nuns who will, you know, wear veils and things, and when they join a religious order, maybe they're told that they have to do that. And yes, they've made a choice to join the religious order, but what they do is an act of piety. They're not saying everyone has to do it. Um, and I think it's very interesting because you mentioned that it's an act of piety. So, I don't know, maybe you'd like to elaborate on Could that I a little bit, on because that I think one. it's quite important. Well, well, let me bring it, Father Stephen in. Uh, Nasser, I will yeah. come to you and do Um Hamza again. But the difference is, we can see, and with a nun, we can see yeah. her face. I was thinking, I took, I mean, I, I teach at a secondary school here in York, and I took some of the teenagers to one of the convents uh, for Mass to see them. And, uh, and to talk to them. And one of the great, thing, uh, great things was that they, you know, when we were walking home to school, some of the kids were saying, gosh, Father, we didn't realize they were so happy. Um, you know, they were quite genuinely shocked that somebody could become a nun, give their life to God, but they could see and their still face. be happy, but they could see their face. And my friend here is right. There are pious traditions that are associated with different religions, and it's their choice. It's totally our friend here's choice, and we shouldn't persecute her for that. And this is England. We don't ban things that aren't harmful to other people. <laughs> However, I, w I would just say a pure observation, and I don't mean this judgmentally at all, but what I mean is we've, I've been sitting here for the last three quarters of an hour, and I can see you smile. I can see you're a happy Muslim. And that encourages me. I mean that genuinely. And it's n nothing to take away from you at all. Um, but it's just that I can see that, and it's a witness to me that you're happy in your Muslim faith. Um, just that, hopefully, I come across as a happy priest, and the nuns did to the, to the children. It's just that also maybe just add that element of witness Father, to Father, if you're it. happy, we're happy. Can I <laughs> Yeah, no, can, can, can we, Peter, go on. Just, yeah. just dwell, dwell slightly upon a point here. Okay. Islam in this country is a proselytizing religion. It wants to expand. It would like to be the main religion in this country if it possibly could. When we what see, religion wouldn't? Well, um, Judaism, for instance, wouldn't. Um, and this is already a, a Christian country, so it's a, it's, a, it's a slightly complicated thing to have Islam proselytizing and seeking to expand itself. And you, you go anywhere now and you'll see new mosques on high points in cities, mm. you'll see open demonstrations of, of, of Muslim piety of this kind everywhere. It has a purpose. The thing is this, I'm all in favor of people being able to wear what they like, and, and I think that if, if, if we're going to have freedom for, is, for, for Islam to behave in this way, then we should remember we should also make sure that Christians are free to say and think and do what they like as well, which is increasingly becoming a problem. They're not, you know, and there are a lot of assaults on Christians.
Christianity in the, in the society. But the, 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 the real point here about Islam is this. If, if it seeks to become the majority in the main religion in this country, does it really actually want all women to dress as Um Hamza? As, as Um Hamza does. I suspect it does. And I think that's the argument we should really be having. Not about her right to do as she wishes, which I wouldn't want to interfere with, but with what Islam actually wants Can in I this society. Can I just challenge Peter a second? Please, please. I mean, I would like to know how many people in here have been pressurized or um, approached by a Muslim to convert to Islam. I would really like to, if uh, anybody it doesn't, take that for, it doesn't take that form, Yvonne. It's a, the, for, the form it takes is that you, you send your child to a Christian school and he, he comes home and he says he's been asked to design a mosque. And th this yeah. happens a no, lot. So you want to come in here. You met, you met Diane a few, few years ago and, um, and now, of course, you, you follow the d dress codes of what you believe. Is this not about a husband saying to his wife, I don't trust you, cover up when you go not out? Not at all, not at all. No? It's, a matter, it's a matter, not the choice. I mean, I, I, I do appreciate this gentleman he's talking about. He has 40 years of reading of the Quran and, and, the, Tash, and yeah. the books, but I think you should no, go another 40 years to read a little bit more because you know nothing. I'm sorry, this is, this is absolutely a religious issue. Omo Hamza, she has a religious duty and religious obligation. We must Quran. respect that. I challenge you the on this one. The in the Quran that you must cover your face. I can read it to you out, yeah, outside. I'm sure you can. But, yeah, but I can. All right? I'm a chaplain and I can't well, why isn't your that. wife's face covered then? Yeah. What's, that's that's where, the, where it comes to the matter with the choice. It's, uh, first of all, it's a religious obligation. Secondly, it's, it's, obligation her, duty. No choice. it's her duty to do that. <laughs> Thirdly, do you know, do you, are you aware that I'm a male myself? If I go to houses, I'm not allowed to look. I'm not allowed to look to see who is there. I'm not allowed to raise even my eyes. I go there, modesty, just walk walk in and just meet the male. I'm not allowed to look. Mm. This is this is the last the first the first look for identification. Is that a good thing or a bad this, thing? It is it is a bad thing to look to uh, even and uh, even to, uh, just to identify people. But I'm not allowed to look. Mm. This what woman here he should, he should not I mean, yeah. 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 should not be yeah. demonized. Yeah. 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 We need to cut to the chase. This issue of niqab and burqa is a foreign importation. When I arrived in this country thirty years from South Africa there was no such thing. We we have a Wahhabi Salafi ideology is coming in here, and we need to examine and ask ourselves as Muslims, is this what we want? No, because Wahhabism and Salafism is not what Islam well, so is. Has, you've is had your duty. hand up for so long, I yeah, want to hear what you want to say. Like and the headscarf and the burqa in particular is such a personal issue to me. Firstly, I have to say that I feel, as much as I express myself through colour and you know, through Western clothing, um, that's as much as valid as uh, Umm Haza expressing herself through the burqa, which is also, you know, you could say, a piece of cultural clothing from the East. Secondly, I personally don't wear the headscarf because I feel that men are going to be attracted to me as I walk down the street. Um, I don't find that uh, a personally important um, you know, ethos behind mm -hmm. covering. I feel I cover just for myself, literally, just to, just to preserve the beauty for myself and, and hide a little bit of me from the world so that the world doesn't know all of me. Okay, you know so I mean? Omar, we'll give you the last word. Uh, do, you, do, do people look at you as you walk about the streets of this country? Uh, what you think you live in London? Do people look at you in a strange way when they see you? Do you are you aware of that? I, to be very honest, I've never feel victimised in any way whatsoever. Living in the country, I, I feel very proud for, to live in Britain. Being a free country, it's very, very accommodating so far. And you feel empowered? Very much. I mean, I, I, I feel... I've never felt any sense of insecurity leaving my house, going out. I do everything. I'm, you know, I'm a normal mother like everybody else. <laughs> And I've never felt victimised in any way whatsoever. And I've never been um, abused, hurled at, or anything like that. Well, I hope, you didn't, I hope you didn't feel bullied this morning. Thank no, you for. Thank you very much, Um Hamza, for coming on and talking. Thank you all very much.